Hey everyone and welcome back to the Ulta New uh, YouTube channel. It's Erica with you today for my very first card and I am going to be using the beautiful pink star tulip die set which comes in this fantastic packaging with big bloom on the front, all of the bits and pieces inside, numbered. I am loving the keyhole system, it makes it so easy for me to line things up. I am a big fan, big fan indeed. Um, I am going to go straight into die cutting some pieces out and um, I, I'm only going to show you one but I did do a few because I'm a lunatic like that. So I do like to have options but I'm going to show you a couple of ways that I have added colours to these. But we are only going to go through one ink blending because I figured you know you do it once then you've seen it. So we are going to make two flowers today though and also the leaves. But first off, we're just gonna get all of our bits and pieces out. I have separated them all into the ones that belong together. And I'm going to be using the sticky mat for the stamp wheel to make sure, see, look, sticks, brilliant. So this is gonna make ink blending really, really easy. Now, I will admit that I did kind of think that I was gonna go straight for the big flower here and um, add color directly. And I did do one and then I thought, oh, because my plan was originally to do each kind of number, all of the pieces together. But then I thought, okay, no, you know what? We're gonna change our game plan. So we're gonna do all the little bits and pieces first. And then um, I did use cotton candy ink on that one and I wasn't super keen. So I decided to go for this gorgeous color, which is coral berry. And it's insanely gorgeous. So you can kind of see that I have ink blended mostly from the middle and then kind of gone outwards to have that little bit of highlight. Now I am cleaning off the sticky mat a little bit with just a bit of water and a towel. For some reason, I decided not to use it for the leaves, which was in hindsight quite silly. I should have done that again because it would have made life so much easier. Um, I did use the brand new micro blending brushes, which were Oh, such a godsend. They made life so easy to just get the color where I wanted them because I, again, wanted a bit of a highlight on the leaves so that not the whole thing is covered by ink. I just feel like it gives it more life. So if you have um, a highlight and then a bit of a contrast, which is we're adding here, um, it just kind of brings them all to life and it gives them even more of a 3D look. So this is one of the things like, I used to be a florist in a, I say previous life, no, but in this life, but many years ago. And I absolutely love flowers and studying flowers and coloring flowers. And this is just one of those things where I'm taking another part of my life and adding it to my card making life. And I'm hoping you find this little tip helpful and useful. But now we are almost finished with all of our bits and pieces here. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to use the guide on the back. Brilliant idea again. So it gives you all of the numbers here and you can actually see like it says not one and then it shows you where the arrow goes. Now, before I cut these out, I did not realize there is number actually on the big flowers as well, which is again, so genius. Because one of the things that I have struggled with in the past is when you're trying to layer up the die cuts and you're kind of like, well, especially when there's no guide, then it just makes things a little bit complicated. But now here, look, ta-da, how easy peasy is that? So number one on the bottom, add a little bit of glue. On number two, I'll line up those arrows and you're good to go. I mean, it's brilliant and it's genius. And I cannot thank Altenew enough for making this system because this has saved me so much time. Uh, the rest of this will be sped up a little bit, but not by much, not by much. So it's super, super, super easy. And the one thing I will say though, uh, which you will see in the second flower that I put together, is that I decided to add each layer, like not glue the, the highlights onto my pieces first, but actually do them all in kind of one go. So all of the pieces on number one, down, all of the pieces on number two, etc., etc. This, I mean, it works, but I do feel that it was actually faster and easier to put all the pieces together beforehand and then layer them up. So, you know, this is what something I found works for me, but you do try, try by ways and see which ones you find works best for you. But I mean, look at that. But now you can kind of see that the color that I used on the cotton candy, on the highlights, it just doesn't quite fit. But 
we are going to move on to our uh, very layered and textured background. So I have this fantastic grey linen textured cardstock. And then this is one of my first ever cover plates from Altenew. So this is the layered plaid die cut or cover plate B. So there's an A as well. It has a friend. Now I will show you a little trick. So my die cutting machine doesn't, unless I use a metal shim, it doesn't cut everything out super, super great. So I use a tweezers and then by holding the cover plate slightly above the table or the desk, and then you just poke through, it just, it comes out so, 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 so easy. It's yeah, it's a time saver for sure. Cause I don't like to use those kind of tools that are supposed to help you get the pieces out. Cause I, I don't know whether it's just me, but I just feel like they kind of rip the paper a little bit. So here we are going to, so this is my second piece. We're going to take this, we're going to layer that up with our first piece. And then because we're crazy, well, not, maybe not we, I am a little bit crazy. I actually ended up adding a third layer as well. Now, one thing I will always say when you're layering up die cuts, always use a liquid adhesive, always, always, because those extra few seconds that you get to kind of make sure everything goes on straight, they can save you a lot of hand wringing, hair pulling, swear words. There have been a fair few swear words in my time when I realized that things have not gone on straight. So it's just one of those top tips that really make life so much easier. So now we're going to again add more liquid adhesive and then we're going to add this onto our fantastic background. So this is the just two pieces at this point because I realized that the top piece that I added to uh, um, to this whole thing was actually I managed to cut off the side a little bit. So that was my excuse to add a third, but I think you will agree that it was worth that third layer because look at that texture and that depth. Oof, very nice, isn't it? So that is going to feel very nice and tactile. So now I have got my other pieces ready here. So I used purple vine, I think for these ones, or maybe I used coral berry again. I just, um, I, loving these pink inks because they're just so lush and vibrant. Now I did use the same color on all of the bits and pieces, including the highlights. I just went in with a much lighter hand to get a lighter look. So I feel like this works a lot better and it kind of felt a little bit more organic and cohesive. So I would, again, I mean, this, this is a, my preference. I preferred that color or this combination here. If you want to try something else, you know, I, I would say go play. Part of crossing is supposed to be about fun and discovering what you like and what you don't like and things that work and don't work. So this is something that worked for me. I hope it works for you and that you will save yourself some time and hassle, but just go with the flow and see what works for you. I think part of the creative process is just kind of letting loose and having fun and then kind of looking back after and sort of say, okay, what worked and what didn't work? Like trying to analyze it as you're crafting is kind of a little bit of a mojo kind of killer, I think anyway. So, but now again, we're going to have a look at this brilliant keyhole system. I mean, I know I keep harping on about that, but it is just so brilliant. So one and two, ta-da, look at that. And again, the, the whole when I was adding the highlights sped up a little bit, but only by like, so that is twice the speed. So it takes very, very little time to get this whole thing put together. I think probably the ink blending might've taken longer than the, the gluing part, which is ironic because it used to be the other way around for me. Like adding the color was easy peasy breezy, no problems. And then sitting there and trying to figure out which piece goes where, that was what used to take a long time for me. But yeah, that is it. So maybe a couple of minutes tops and the whole flower is ready. And I think this turned out much better than the first one. I mean, it's subtle, but there's a difference. Now I did want to add a little bit of sparkle to this. And so I have used the watercolors that I have. So these are uh, Gansai Tambi starry colors but I do have the metallic watercolors from Altenew on my wish list, So I will be for sure adding those because you can see that I'm nearly out, but that sparkle, mm, so good, right? So now we are going to have, we're going to look at our beautiful flower. We are also going to grab all of our leaves. There is a quite a few leaves 
and our very luscious and uh, texture rich background. And we are going to puzzle this all together with this fun sentiment from the Timeless Sentiment 2 set. Oh, I do love a good word sentiment. It's just, mm, it's so good. And I love word that cuts. It's just, it's something so fun because you have so many options and opportunities to use these in different ways. Use the shadow bit, don't use the shadow bit, use colored cardstock, watercolor, ink blend, use sprays or whatever. Do stenciling, cut your word dye out of that. It, there's just so much you can do. I, yeah, big fan. I cannot stress this enough. Now, I'm usually I use press and seal to pick up everything and glue things together. But here I decided to just kind of freehand it a little bit. So I have just lifted my flower and then I'm lifting the leaves a little bit, adding a tiny bit of adhesive. So we're not gonna add loads and loads because we do want a little bit of life in those leaves as well. For the flower, however, oh yes, we are gonna go texture and foam tape and we are gonna prop that baby up. So here I am taking some of the Ulta New foam tape and I'm putting it onto a back a piece of like backing tape from double sided tape. It makes it so much easier to cut your foam tape into the perfect size without the adhesive sticking to everything. So don't feel like you're strange if you keep the backing of double sided tape because it will come in handy. Yes, look at this. It just makes life so much easier and it saves you a lot of sticky mess for later. So now we're gonna peel this off and then we're going to gently plop our flower right where it's supposed to go. Oh, look at that, so gorgeous. And then on the back of this, because we have added foam tape to the flower and this is going to overlap a little bit, we're going to add a little bit of foam tape to this as well. Now, if you want to make this card a little bit more post service friendly, you can skip the foam tape with all of this and you can use just one layer of that um, layering die uh, for the background because you don't have to have three layers really. I mean, I, I just like the layers so that's why I go crazy. But if you wanna make this a little bit more poster friendly, like I said, you can do. So the only thing that will be really thick, it is the actual flower. But this is the card and I could have stopped here. Yes, I could, but <laughs> I did not, no. So I um I have a little bit of an addiction to sparkles and you know bling a ling. So I decided to use these gorgeous gem sparkles that are the smoky quartz. And I was fairly sure I was gonna use the iridescent ones or right away. But I thought for the sake of fairness to the three colors in there, I thought let's just, you know, kind of look a little bit because I thought maybe the darker ones would look really great with that dark gray background. But the iridescent ones run out because they are stunning. Okay, so I usually go slightly overboard. And by slightly, I mean crazy, crazy overboard. I over bling a lot. I can't help myself. I'm not gonna stop. I am going to carry on. However, for this card, I managed to kind of tone myself down a little bit, um, even with that one trying to run off and hide from me. But yeah, usually I go way, way overboard, like I said, but with the sparkle on the flowers and all of these lovely, gorgeous, you know, layers and textures, I just thought this might just need a few. And I think I stopped at seven, which must be a bit of a record low number for me, actually. But I think it was just the right kind of Shazam on this card. I hope you think so too. And I would love to hear what you think of this card and also my first video for Altenew. I am so excited to be part of the design team and I really hope to bring you inspiration, some top tips and also lots of die cutting and layering fun because texture is, it's my thing, it's my jam, I'm gonna keep doing it. But here is the card for one last little look and I will show you a couple of photos as well. But with that, I'm all done. Thank you so much for stopping by today and spending this time with me. Don't forget to subscribe to the Alternate channel, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you very soon again. Have a lovely day. Bye. Hey there, Lydia here. I really do hope that you've just enjoyed the video. 
If so, please subscribe to the All To New YouTube channel. Also turn on the notification bell so you can get your daily dose of crafty techniques and tutorials just like this. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.